Let's go through this complicated trig sub problem. So we started out with the square root of this quadratic and I completed the square to come down to this step. Now the way I do trig sub is to create a 1 here in this position so I'm going to think of a 4 being here and in the denominator of this term. So then I factor out a 4 in the denominator coming through the square root so that gives 1 half integral, we'll leave the numerator alone for the moment, and in the denominator we are going to have the square root of x minus 3 divided by 2 quantity squared plus 1. So the goal here is to have a plus 1 and then another square over here. So we have a sum of squares here and that can be simplified when we do trigonometric substitution. So if we let x minus 3 over 2 be tangent of theta, we will be able to simplify this integral tremendously. If you would like, multiply both sides by 2. You don't have to do this step, but some find it easier to do the derivative step when you've isolated x, in this case x minus 3. So there's our derivative step. And let's go ahead and substitute that into the integral. So we are going to have 1 half integral. In the numerator, we have x minus 3 squared. Here's x minus 3. And when we square that, we get 4 tangent squared of theta. dx is equal to 2 secant squared of theta, d theta, in the denominator. We have the square root of tan squared plus 1, which is the square root of secant squared. We have some obvious simplification here. We can cancel out those 2's. We can notice that the square root of secant squared is secant, and that will take away one of those factors of secant in the numerator. And our constant out in front will then become a 4. And we have integral tan squared theta multiplied by secant of theta d theta. This integral has to be done with the Pythagorean identity. It's not one of those integrals where we have products of tangents and secants that you can use a sort of a shortcut for. If secant had an even power, you could peel off secant squared and turn the remaining secants to tangents. If the tangent had an odd power, you could pull off a fact you could pull off tan theta secant theta and turn the rest of the tangents to secants. But anyway, that does not work here. So we go to the Pythagorean identity, tan squared is secant squared minus one. Multiply that by secant of theta. This is going to give us 4 integral secant cubed of theta minus secant of theta. All right, now, integral of secant cubed, that's one that we've seen before. This is done using integration by parts. So I will assume that you know how to do this one by integration by parts. So here's what we end up with, 4 times the quantity. When we do that integral there, we're going to end up with 1 half. So the integral of secant cubed is 1 half secant theta tangent theta plus 1 half natural log absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta minus the integral of secant which is also natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. And let's get the bracket in there. So we have all that. Let's go ahead and distribute the 4. So we'll have 2 secant theta tangent theta. Over here we have like terms. This will be minus 1 half natural log secant theta plus tangent theta. Distribute the 4, so we get minus 2 natural log secant theta plus tangent theta 
plus c. <clears throat> now we need to convert back to x's. Let's go ahead and look at our let statement up here. Our let statement says that tangent of theta is x minus 3 over 2. So let's draw a triangle. Put theta in the corner. Create some sides that satisfy that property. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. That makes the hypotenuse the square root of the sum of the squares. So x minus 3 quantity squared plus 4. We can now use that triangle to convert back to x's down here. This will give us 2 times secant of theta. Secant of theta is the square root of x minus 3 squared plus 4 divided by 2 multiplied by tangent of theta, which is x minus 3 divided by 2 minus 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta. plus tangent theta. And now let's simplify this. We can clearly cancel a factor of 2. And <clears throat> we will be left with the quantity x minus 3 multiplied by the square root of x minus 3 squared plus 4, all divided by 2 minus 2 times the natural log. Now here's the tricky part. A lot of textbooks will write this answer without a 2 in the denominator. And the reason we can do that is with a log property. Here we have a common denominator of 2. And what we can do is separate this log of a quotient into the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. The log of the denominator is a constant, and that can be absorbed with the c. So for example, if you had something like natural log of x over 2 plus c, you could rewrite that as natural log of x minus natural log of 2 plus c. And we treat the c as a, kind of like a recycle bin. And anytime there's an extra constant floating around, we can just let that C absorb it. Certainly, the actual value of C changes as you modify it, but that's not important. The important thing with integration is that it's a constant. Hope that helps.